Welcome back to Films Retold. Today I want to talk about a new show called From. From is an American science fiction horror TV series created and written by John Griffin and executive produced by the Russo Brothers. Yes, the same Russo Brothers responsible for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going to be theorizing on what the monsters are in the series and taking a look at some of the folklore that seems to match up pretty close to the monsters we see in the show. I want to give a shout out to this man right here. He was the one who broke down this theory and created a comprehensive Reddit post on the subject. His post goes into even more detail than this video, so I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, from this point on, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't watched at least episode 8 yet, you might want to come back after getting caught up. Here's what we know so far about the monsters in the show. They're able to shapeshift into creatures with long claws and razor-sharp teeth. They keep a human form until they decide to kill. The monsters only come out at night, and they don't seem to kill for food. They seem to kill for sport, and they like to toy with their victims because we never see them run after their prey, but instead walk towards them slowly. When they do catch a victim, they brutally murder them by ripping limbs off, almost as if to kill them in the most painful way possible. The monsters know the names of all the townsfolk, and are very good at deceiving their victims. They can't enter homes that have talesmen unless their victim lets them inside. Most of the time that we do see them, they are in large groups. With all that being said, we can start to see if there's any connection with the monsters to mythology, and I think I found something pretty close. And that would be the Slua. Sluas are derived from the Scottish Gaelic folklore. Sluas, also known as the Wild Hunt, or the Host of the Unforgiven Dead, they are fairy-like creatures that prey on the souls of their victims. Sluas are said to be the darkest and most vile creatures imaginable. They were believed to be some ill-begotten form of fairy folk, with no reason, no loyalty, and no mercy. However, once Christianity came into the picture, the Slua were renamed to a pack of unforgiven, unrepentant, dead sinners. This is because the Slua were thought to once be human. The Slua exist on stealing the souls of the living, and especially the dying. Huddling and hiding in forgotten and dark places, they lay in wait for nightfall. Once the sun has left the sky, they strike out, in what to the untrained eye appears to be a vast and ominous flock of large ravens or other birds. In Irish mythology, the Slua were said to fly in from the west to steal a dying soul before it was given last rites. To this day, doors and windows on the west sides of houses are kept closed if there is a sick or dying person at home. One of the ways to attract a Slua to you is through the silent hopelessness of one's heart. Once you've drawn the attention of the wild hunt, only by placing another in their path will dissuade them. You must be willing to sacrifice another to be taken in your place. Of course, the Slua are not opposed to taking souls of the happy, healthy, and living. In fact, those are the souls sweetest for them to take. Although, admittedly, prying the soul from the body of an otherwise healthy and happy victim does sometimes present a challenge. If you should happen to catch sight of the host of the unforgiven dead, it's not an immediate death sentence. They can be blocked or evaded by running or staying indoors after dark. Once a soul is taken, there is no mercy, no release to the afterlife, and no escape. You are simply doomed to circle the darkened skies, stealing souls for all of eternity. Slua are said to be haggard and thin, skin barely clinging to the bone of a version of what used to be their human form. Hands and feet of bony claws, sparse strings of dark hair covering their heads, gnarled pointed teeth protruding from a beak-like mouth. Their looks do not lend themselves to be blending in easily with the living, so they keep to the wild hunt, they keep to the night skies, where their form can morph and utilize the darkness of the shadows. So now that we know a little bit about the Slua, we can start making some comparisons. We talked about how the Slua will often go after sick or dying souls, and that one of the ways to attract a Slua is to have hopelessness in one's heart. I believe this is what draws a lot of our characters into the pocket dimension that our town exists in. This would line up with quite a few characters in the show. We learn that Boyd Stevens has Parkinson's disease. This would put him into the sick and dying category, but also his wife seemed to be suffering from mental illness herself. Now it's true that it's possible that the pocket dimension was what caused her to kill everybody, but I believe she had been suffering from PTSD from her time as a marine. These could be the reasons why they ended up in the town. We also learn that Father Cotri ended up in the town after ignoring a little boy's cry for help, leading to the boy's death at the hands of his father. Father Cotri at the time was contemplating suicide by jumping off the bridge, but he says he heard the word of God tell him to get back in the car and drive. Two hours later, he was in the pocket dimension. Perhaps the voice he heard was not God, but instead a slua attracting Father Cotri, because at the time he felt hopelessness in his heart. Another example we have for this is when Tabitha told Julie about the death of her brother Thomas. This gives credit to the Matthews family having a broken heart, and possibly being lured into the pocket dimension. There are more examples of this with other characters, but let's move on. 
when the Matthews family first comes across the downed tree, they see a huge flock of crows. I think this is signifying that they've entered the pocket dimension. Sluas are described as being like a large flock of crows or ravens. Sluas also share other physical traits that we have seen with our monsters from the show. They can take human form, and they can shapeshift. When in monster form, they have bony claws, gnarled pointy teeth, and skin that looks to be rotten. All of this lines up with the sluas. Some other characteristics that match are the fact that sluas only hunt at night and cannot enter homes unless they are let in. It's possible that the talesmen are simply a plot device to show us, the viewer, how bad life was in the town before Boyd showed up. When we see the aftermath of a character death, their chest has been completely emptied by the creatures. Many believe that the heart is where the soul resides in a human body, and sluas feed on souls. I believe the sluas are the closest explanation to the monsters we see in the show. All of the monsters we see were humans trapped in the pocket dimension, turned into sluas, and are doomed for eternity to hunt other human souls. What do you think? Are the monsters sluas, or is there another mythological creature that matches the monster we see in the series? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to like and subscribe. I will be doing weekly breakdowns on the remaining episodes of the series. Thanks for watching.